Welcome to the next session. Today we're going to be looking at the waiver classification for ankle fractures. Now whilst there are numerous classification systems in orthopaedics, the waiver classification is one of the most commonly used. It can give information about not only the fracture type and pattern, but also its management. So let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. So let's start off with a diagram, of an AP view of the fibula and the tibia. So tibia here and fibula here. And here we have the talus. The Weber classification focuses only on where the fracture is in the lateral malleolus. It does not look at any other parts of the ankle, such as the medial malleolus or the talus. So it can be stratified into an A, B or C. And this all depends on where the fracture is in relation to what's known as the syndesmosis. The syndesmosis is the distal tibiofibular joint. And this is reinforced by many ligaments. This is key to the Weber classification, as a fracture occurring below this point is known as a Weber A fracture. A fracture occurring at the level of the syndesmosis is known as a Weber B. And a fracture occurring above is known as a Weber C fracture. Now let's have a look at each of these in a bit more detail. The key relevance of the syndesmosis is to ankle stability. If the syndesmosis or the distal tibiofibular joint is intact, this suggests that the ankle will be stable and therefore the patient can put weight on the ankle and does not need an operation to fix the fracture. So if we can imagine Weber A fractures fracturing the fibula distal to the syndesmosis, are not going to involve the syndesmosis and therefore these are going to be stable injuries. Therefore stable injuries can have the patient putting weight on this and will not displace the syndesmosis or the tibia fibula and therefore these can be treated non-operatively. Looking at Weber C injuries we can see that a fracture above the level of the syndesmosis We'll have the energy travelling through the ankle and exiting above the syndesmosis. And therefore, these will have compromised the syndesmosis, whether or not it can be seen on an x-ray. There are certain radiological parameters and measurements that we look for on an x-ray to look for syndesmosis um, and whether this is intact or not. However, a Weber C fracture will have compromised the syndesmosis and therefore this is an unstable injury. We can imagine if we put weight through our ankle, there's a, chart, there's a risk that this may displace the tibia and fibula um, and therefore lead to an unstable ankle. Therefore, Weber C fractures are most um, ideally treated with uh, an or open reduction and an internal fixation procedure. And then we have the category in the middle, the Weber B ankle fractures. These are ankle fractures that go through the syndesmosis. And it can often be unclear whether these have compromised the syndesmosis and therefore when these are, whether, whether these are unstable injuries or whether the syndesmosis has not been affected. Therefore, in the initial management, we tend to allow the patient to put weight on their foot in a um, fixed angle walking boot and see them in the fracture clinic with weight bearing views to see if there's any disruption of the syndesmosis. This allows us to assess the patient one week after they've had the injury, when hopefully pain will not be as much of an issue, and therefore we can truly assess whether the syndesmosis is intact or not. If the syndesmosis is intact, we can manage these as we would for a Weber A ankle fracture. That's to say, without an operation, non-operatively in a walking boot or comfortable padded shoes or trainers. If we do see any um, compromise in the syndesmosis or are concerned about this, 
then we would proceed to treat these as Weber C ankle fractures. Therefore, with an open reduction internal fixation procedure to stabilize the syndesmosis. Now there's a couple of caveats that I wanted to talk about with this. I talked about earlier that the Weber classification does not focus on the medial malleolus. Now let's assume that we had a Weber A ankle fracture that's distal to the syndesmosis with a medial malleolus ankle fracture as well. This is therefore a bimalleolar ankle fracture. And although the fibular aspect of this is stable, once we put this together with the medial malleolus fracture, this is a bimalleolar fracture and therefore unstable. As you can imagine that the talus can move left or right or medially and laterally without having the buttress of an intact malleolus. Therefore, this is an unstable injury and would most ideally be treated with an open reduction internal fixation, even though the fibular component of this is a Weber A ankle fracture. The other caveat to this is if we look at a ankle injury in which we cannot see a fibular fracture. So if we look at an ankle which looks like there may be a syndesmotic injury but we cannot see uh, an ankle fracture, we always have to remember to look more proximally at the fibula as there can be what we call a high um, Weber C ankle fracture. This is where the energy has gone through the ankle, through the syndesmosis and exited higher up rather than exiting just above the syndesmosis where we would be able to see it on an ankle x-ray. Therefore the syndesmosis is disrupted and this may cause us to have radiological abnormalities when we look at the ankle x-ray in relation to where the talus sits in the um, ankle joint. This is known as a high Weber C fracture or also termed a mesonerve nerve fracture. We'd still need to stabilize the syndesmosis as this is a Weber C ankle fracture and therefore an unstable injury. Although we would not need to fix the fracture this high as uh, this would require further dissection um, and uh, would be a lot of risk compared to the benefits. Therefore, just to clarify, the Weber classification centers on whether the fracture in the lateral malleolus is in relation to the syndesmosis. If it is below the syndesmosis or distal to, it's a Weber A ankle fracture, and this can be treated non-operatively. If this is at the level of the syndesmosis, this is a Weber B ankle fracture, and may or may not be treated operatively, depending on whether the syndesmosis is stable, which may not be apparent initially and may need to be reassessed a week down the line. And finally, we have a Weber C ankle fracture, which is suprasyndesmotic or above the syndesmosis, which is an unstable injury as it has compromised the syndesmosis and therefore would ideally require an open reduction internal fixator procedure. I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any further ideas for any teaching topics, please feel free to comment below. I'll see you on the next session. Thank you very much. <laughs>